I walked out of the test pretty certain I thought I, I got the first five wines. I thought wine two was an Albarino. <laughs> it was super peachy. And then I came out of the test and, and uh, I think Jason Heller called it Gruner. I was like, Jesus. Because <laughs> Jason always nails Gruner, you know? It's like, if Jason calls something and I call something else, you know, he's probably right. <laughs> so it's like, immediately I thought, uh, okay, that's the case. Half of us were in Albarino, half of us were in Gruner, but the but tasters that I really, you know, that I really uh, think are on top of it, they all called Gruner. I was like, okay, so it's most most likely I missed it because I have a problem with Albarino and Gruner Beltliner. Um, and uh, hopefully that changes. And then wine six, I was lost on. It was kind of like, had like VA, it was funky. I didn't know what to do with it. I thought it was Italian. And then I, the last second I changed it to Rioja. And everyone that passed called it Italian. Like, you know, some people called it, you know, Brunello. Some people called it Barolo, but most people think it was a Corvina or like Amarone or something. But, you know, you never know what it is, but, you know, you talk to people who passed and most of the people called it Italian and, uh, most people going back to what the structure was, was high in alcohol, it was probably Amarone, but you know, you'll never know and nobody will ever tell you. Uh, I missed a Willamette Valley Pinot Noir today, so I figured, you know, might as well smell it while I'm studying and try to get it in my head. I was convinced, uh, one of these wines was from New Zealand, and it was from Oregon. And it's corked. Shit. You know, this is just a simple taste test. There's a bacteria that, it's, it's basically a combination of chlorine and mold that comes together creating, you know, tetrachloroanisole. And it basically causes the wine to smell like decomposing newspaper. It, you know, if you left newspaper in your side yard and it rained and you meant to move it out, you know, at the end of the winter, what does that smell like? That's basically what this cork smells like. It's very rare that the wine's going to be drinkable. But, um... It's not as bad, but it's... Yeah, it's enough to get me a dry heave a little bit. Emotionally, anyways. Second bottle of Willamette Valley Pinot. Let's. Hey, this wine's delicious. What's it like being filmed? Yeah, I don't know. At this point, it's uh, it's not it's not too strange. I just always wonder what the other side looks like. <laughs> You know, getting ready for the last little bit. There's no time to really recognize that you're you're tired and just tasting, tasting all the time. And that's the most major focus I think right now is because, you know, I think, you know, if I don't get theory this year, the tasting, if I knock that out of the way, that's a little bit more of the uncalculated. You never know what six wines are going to go in front of you, but you can always spend, you know, the next year remembering everything in the world, which I've tried to do this year, but it's not, it's not the easiest thing to remember everything. And, uh, you know, they could ask me you know, a hundred straight questions I don't know, and they could ask me a hundred straight questions I do know, but the, you know, you, you never know with, with, uh, with both. I mean, it's all uncalculated, but I would rather pass tasting if I could choose. But um, I think I've done the work necessary to path, pass both parts, and I think I have the potential to, and I, you know, <laughs> I really hope that happens. No, at this point, you know, they're good friends of mine. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, because you know? they'll put you in an awkward position. Yeah, you know, they'll ask you I questions mean, all the time. They two bottles of wine, they want you to. Cumeo? Chardonnay? Yeah, Chardonnay. But they make a soft bond because it's delicious, too. Well. Really? Yeah, don't fuck me. What are you fucking look at the wine impression? Well, I called an Australian something in Blanc last night when it was in Nabla, so yeah. Pretty impressive. Thank you. Our... <laughs> It's just a little bit of a strange thing to have your life documented, you know? It's like, you never know, you never know what you're gonna look like. I usually get off work around between 10 and midnight, and I come home and I, 
and I relax for a minute and then I study usually from about 12.30 to 5.30. And, uh, and I get up and I go to bed if I can. And sometimes I'll be like, you can't remember that flashcard. You go back to the desk for a quick second. And you're just manic, it's crazy. And then, uh, and then I'll go to bed from like six till 12 or six to one. You know, because for some reason my brain is just like, I get off work and it's just ready. If I get up out of bed and I try to study, it just doesn't happen. This is, a, this is a good study wine. Colbin Upper Hunter. Broke Ford, which Upper Hunter? Yeah, you know, I would prefer to, you know, to prefer, you know, to be eating charcuterie and drinking, you know, a glass of Riesling at a wine bar rather than be deep in, you know, the wines of Bulgaria again. But, you know, to tell you the truth, I won't be upset. I mean, if I don't pass, it just means I didn't deserve to pass. I didn't do, I didn't, haven't done enough preparation. I think I have, but, you know, I'm not the ones examining, you know? And the people examining are the ones writing an exam that, are gonna ask me, did you do the work to pass it? And if I think I did, but you know, I might be told otherwise. But you know, we'll see. You know, on, on days I'm, I try to be as zen and, as I possibly can, but uh, you know, I try to meditate as much as possible. But it's kind of hard to focus when you, you know, it's hard to do anything other than study when when you have a big exam coming. Repeat it. Tell me the the bacteria that causes Pierce's disease is. I mean, you know what. I'm not a super stressful person, but I think in this last 30, 35 days, you start to realize how much it means to pass this and how much that we all, you know, including Dustin and Brian and all these guys, they all have the potential to do it. And I think it's what you do in the last 35 to 40 days. And, you know, if uh, you let the stress get to you too much, it, it hurts you. I think it's important to, to uh, not be too stressful or not to be too relaxed. I'm gonna close my eyes. You put a nose to my glass. My, you put a glass to my nose. I opened my eyes, I fucked myself. I think it's an interesting, interesting passion that we've all developed, you know? I mean, you have this plant, you know? You have the grape, you know, grape that's produced and, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, I mean, people have been dedicating their life to make something amazing out of it, you know? We're at the culmination of the best, the best knowledge about the best winemaking. And, uh, you know, sommeliers are professionals that are supposedly experts about knowing about beverage and wine. So, I don't know, for me, it's, I think it's an amazing, amazing, for, it's an amazing art to be able to understand the whole world. And it's an amazing thing to show it to people and educate others. And I think it's, you know, through the senses, you know, we all live through the senses. And I think wine is an amazing way to, you know, pass, you, pass life. You know what, there is no, there is no obstacles. It's just, the test is there and I just have to continue on my study schedule. I still have, you know, a lot of the regions of the world to brush up on. You know, the good news is I, you know, sat the exam, you know, a year ago and the top psalm was like, you know, six months ago. So I've been preparing for the top psalm and then, you know, haven't taken too much time off. I took, you know, three months off of theory and then went right back. So everything's pretty fresh. What are the zones of New South Wales? The zones of New South Wales are big rivers, center ranges, Hunter, Hunter Valley, Northern Rivers, Northern Slopes, Southern New South Wales, South Coast, and Western Plains. On a, on a scale of one to seven, uh, sorry, <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, I'm about a seven in terms of how tired I am. I'm not super exhausted, but you know, I'm just, you know, I gotta go taste with Brian Cronin, I'm gonna go home and, you know, I'm f just finishing Hungary right now and then going into, you know, Romania and Bulgaria and then gonna hit <laughs> New Zealand and Australia over the next, you know, two and a half weeks and then going to South America, you know. And then, you know, it's stuff I've all studied, but it's different. You have to like go in and study it and know every piece of information. There's, you don't just like go off, oh, I studied it four months ago. You, there's all sorts of questions that, you know, they're gonna ask you, you know, maybe name three or four 
areas within Brazil. And if you haven't looked at that question in a few weeks, it, that information doesn't stay. You know, the premier crews of, Chibli, of Chablis and, you know, like, you know, all the grand crews and all of the classification of Bordeaux, that stays with you because you use it and you work with it. But, you know, if you start asking me sub-regions of, you know, Colchagua, you know, it doesn't come up. But if I look at the card for 10 seconds, uh, I have a point of reference and I have an acronym that I use, but I can't remember right now. Everyone, everyone's got geeky uh, synonyms, that like weird stuff. Like a classic one for remembering the bottle sizes is uh, uh, just remove my socks before Nookie, meaning Jeroboam, <laughs> Rehoboam, Methuselah, Thal Salmanazar, Balthazar, Nebuchadnezzar, I think that's how it goes. And then the others is per Solomon and Primat. But... but before the exam, I'll have it, you know, I'll, I'll, and I'll know all of that random stuff that you tend to, to uh, you sneeze and you forget a country, you know? You timed out too, so it's going. Cool. Well, it's different on your, on your masters. You're, you can't quite say, you know, just remove my socks before Nookie. They're going to think you're a little strange. <laughs> it's like, it's like after the exam, it's crazy how much stuff, um, you know, you fit into your brain, but you have to have a reference point to be able to get to that information. And if you don't, you're, you're not going to remember the information on the exam. Still ones from French recorder may be released as a uh... I don't know. What's the answer? Uh, Corte Franca or Sabino, DOC. I think I have a good shot. I think I have a good shot. I mean, in my mind, I look into the future that I will pass this exam. But, you know, like, that's just the way I program myself. I think that's the way you have to think. Going into this exam, I'm going to pass this exam, or else you're just, you know, you have to go in with ultimate confidence that I have what it takes to pass this exam, or else you might not as well, you might as well not go, so. Cool. All Good. right. Yeah. By the way, you're my you're my favorite interview. But I gotta, we gotta cut it because it's time. But Good. I wish we could go on another. Trey tells everyone that you're my favorite interview. <laughs> actually, I did, uh, actually, I, do, I don't do that. Not because of murder, Patty. You can't cry. Okay. <laughs>